Hello, friends. This is Dr. Hallelujah. This is Dr. Francis Miles. I'm so excited that um, I'm so excited that um, you have come to another episode two of Dream Interpretation Live with your host, Dr. Francis Miles, and uh, my spiritual son, a extraordinary apostle. Uh, Lee Robertson, uh, founder of Sons of God Embassy, uh, uh, author of The Blood and the Other Voice in the, the, other voice in the Courts of Heaven. It's going to be amazing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday. Uh, right now, my wife and I are beaming, are coming from the Philippines. So right now in the Philippines, it's six in the morning. So, you know, I love you guys uh, that I'm up at six in the morning when everybody's asleep to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, but that's the nature of being intercontinental is that happens. I'm in a continent where I'm, I'm ahead of both Africa and um, I'm ahead of the United States of America. So it's really funny to be in a place like that. So I've been, I've having to, I've having to juggle three continents while I'm here. But guess, but guess what? Get uh, share, share, share the, the feed because tell everybody you know, uh, uh, Dr. Miles is live now. Yeah, and Apostle Lee, they are, about, they, are, they are doing the second episode of Dream Interpretation Live. So on Facebook, it's so easy to share. The technology makes it easy for you to share. So we want you to go ahead and share uh, with your friends. Let them know the man of God is in the house. He's about to go live. It's going to be amazing. You know, there's a dimension of the dreams that you're about to understand like you've never had them before. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, listen, I want you guys to let me know that you are excited that I'm sacrificing um, my sleep time to be able to bring you this, uh, this show. So what I wanted to show me, uh, what, what I wanted to, sh to, to do is give me, give me a shout out. Let me know that you are, you, you, you are honoring the sacrifice by simply typing the number one in the comments. So in the comment section, whether you're on Facebook, or on YouTube, I want you to type the number one. That's your shout out, to Dr. Miles. You know, that lets me know, hey, people appreciate you go giving it the extra effort to wake up early in the morning around the world to be able to bring them dream interpretation live. Praise God. Thank you. I see those ones. Hallelujah. Thank you, people. Give me a shout out. People appreciate the sacrifice. Love you. I appreciate you too. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Facebook, do the same thing. Come on, don't let YouTube beat, beat you, Facebook. Give me some ones. Give me a shout out. Let me know. I'm not wasting my time in giving you the best content on the planet. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm getting a shout out even on Facebook as well. Okay. So um, I want to talk about, uh, before we go with Dream Interpretation Live, uh, which is a new show we have, we have designed. It's a bi-weekly show. That means every two weeks we'll do it. So we, we, we'll do it twice a month. Me and Apostle Lee Robertson is based upon a, our upcoming book that we are writing that will, will be published probably by Destiny Image on um, the Understanding the Dreams You Dream. It's going to be an amazing book written by me and the man of God. Praise the Lord. So um, we're excited about being able to look at some of the dreams you sent in and what the Lord is saying by the Spirit of God. But at the same time, we'll always give you a foundational revelation on, uh, on what we're talking about. But before I go into all of that, I just want to, I want to uh, talk about an amazing event I'll be doing uh, in July. Uh, we just finished Kingdom Fire Courts of Heaven. That was out of this world. My God, it was out of this world. So, but now I want to talk to you about another event which is focused on the glory. It's completely focused on the glory. It is called Three Days of Glory. Three Days of Glory. Three Days of Glory. The, and the theme for the conference will be contending for an open heaven. This one will be completely sought out. You don't want to waste your time with this one. You know, you have ample time to be there even if you're international or you are within the 50 states. You know, the devil is alive. The queen of Sheba sacrificed to go and be with Solomon. Those who sacrificed come and be with me at Kingdom Fire. They were radically transformed. I can, there were some YouTubers who came and said, I'm one of your YouTube followers. And I hugged them. 
and they told me that amounts it was worth everything. It was worth every penny to come to the conference. The Prince of the Lord was out of this world at Kingdom Fire. Well, three days of glory will be double, maybe seven times that, because the focus is the glory. We have entered the realm in the spirit where we can't, the anointing is not big enough anymore for the challenges ahead. We need something higher than the anointing. It's called the glory. And so we want you to come and enjoy the glory. These, all these speakers are, can teach on the glory like nobody's business. But I'm so excited about Prophet Josh, Apostle Joshua Giles. If you haven't watched him on Seed Roth, you need to just type Apostle Joshua Giles in YouTube and you watch him on Seed Roth and you'll be blown away. And you'll be like, I gotta be there. Then Apostle Tony, Tommy Aromi, who is a prophet and apostle. I mean, he's, he prophesied the, even the death of the Queen of England. He prophesied so many events. Who's going to be Prime Minister when? He prophesied many things that have come to pass to the door. These are global world events. I mean, just having him alone means we're going to have a, we, 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 are, we are going to be overwhelmed by his followers because he's got thousands of followers in America. So it's going to be an, an amazing time of the God encounter. So don't miss three days of glory. Uh, uh, registration is now open. Go to event.francismiles.com, event.francismiles.com, and begin to arrive, uh, register for to be there in person. Please be there in person. But if you cannot, you better live stream because this is going to be a game changer. So that's why I really want you to prayerfully consider to come. I think God is calling you to come. You just have to obey God. It's going to be amazing. And I pray that God will provide all the finances you need to join us for three days of glory while we'll be contending for an open heaven by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm excited uh, to have uh, um, again on the program, Dream Interpretation Live, my co-host, Apostle Lee Robinson. So let's bring him in. Apostle Lee, we love you, man of God. How are you? Amen. Well, God bless you, Dad. God bless you. <laughs> you know, you just you and your team just came back from uh, I th I think Alabama, Mississippi, and you killed it. The Lord was moving like mighty. You know, uh, do you mind just telling us maybe just one quickly one testimony from those powerful meetings we just did? Yes, we did um, two nights of sonship and then three nights of the blood of Christ, where we witnessed instant healings and miracles. Instant, instant healing and miracles. I mean, backs, necks, muscles was healed instantly in the presence of the blood. The blood is doing something wow. tremendous right now in the midst of the body of Christ. And we are certainly excited about what the blood is doing. But it created a climate. And on the second night, we had 100% healing. 100% healing wow. in Jesus' Come name. On. Yes. You know, that is amazing because, you know, Kathleen, Kathleen Kuhlman used to, you, you, uh, she's known for this particular prophetic word that should always release. And she said that the day is coming when every six cent will be healed. There'll be meetings of 100% healings. Yes. So you just catch that realm, sir. Yes, absolutely. And the blood does it. The blood of Christ does it. Come it on. is one of the most unused weapons in the kingdom of God. Jesus. <laughs> well, listen, very soon we'll be talking about you. We, are, we will give you where you can get Apostle's book, The Blood, The Other Voice in the Courts of Heaven, you know, in, a, in what the broadcast in, uh, before we end the broadcast. But I want to just bring a short teaching, which will always be the format of the show. I bring a short teaching, or Apostle will bring a short teaching. Next time we do it, Apostle will bring a short teaching on, the, on dreams, and then we'll do into, we go into it, our interpretation. But today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the power of dreams. So maybe get your pen and paper out. And we're going we're gonna to look at uh, Job 33. Job 33, we begin to understand that there's real power in dreams because of what God says about dreams in Job 33 and beginning from verse 14. For God may speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. What this tells us, God is always speaking, Okay. God loves us so much to allow us to walk into demonic traps and see us go through 10 years of, of, of drama and pain. What, what do you think God is? He's not a God who loves to see us uh, walk such a, 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 literally walk into a trap. If you are a parent, you would not want your child to walk in a trap. If you know that just 10 miles ahead of the road, 
there is a there is a landmine that your enemies have placed there for your children, you're not gonna sit there and say, Well, I'm gonna just wait and see how they're gonna figure it out. No, the devil is a liar. You're gonna speak, you're gonna scream, you're gonna talk. So, what this shows us, God uh, is always speaking to us during the day. The problem is while we are awake, many of us have not developed the discipline of hearing the voice of God accurately and consistently while we are wide awake. We are so encumbered with so many distractions. That's what this meaning, because look at what it comes next. In a dream, in a vision of the night. So what that tells us, whenever God cannot speak to us during the day, his, his final attempt to try to reach us is in the, in the dream dimension. Why? Because in the dream dimension, we are no longer running about, trying to please everybody. We are trying to raise our bodies down for the next day. God, as a loving father, takes that window and steps into the realm of our dreams and you are going to see what it does in that realm. But what I want to look, you to, to look at is what the Bible says about dreams just in verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night. So a dream is a vision of the night. That's a simple definition of a dream. Nobody can define a dream like the God who gave us dreams. So he's telling us a dream is a vision of the night. Okay? That's, that is what a dream is. It's a vision of the night. And what's the trigger to this dimension of dreams? When deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, that is a trigger for you to enter the realm, the supernatural world of dreams. I call it supernatural world of dreams because the world of dreams, the real estate for the, real, the, the world of dreams is the most fought after, sought after real estate. It is the most sought after real estate in, um, in the Bible, in the spirit world. God and the Satan and witches and wizards, angels are all fighting for real estate in your dream because mm -hmm. they understand you can be directed in your dream. You can be changed in your dream. That when you wake up, you are now being controlled by the spirit that gave you the dream. Especially if you understand what the dream was about, you can really submit and heal to the spirit of the dream. Now, in the demonic side, the devil doesn't care if you don't understand the dream. As a matter of fact, he doesn't want you to understand the dream. He wants you to put it away. Because then, whatever he's trying to program in your life, he can rip in your, in, your, in your waking. He can rip in your waking because you just, ah, that's nothing. But God wants you to understand because he wants you to respond. He says, verse 16, when he opens the ears of men. So when you, are, when you go to sleep, something supernatural happens, apostle. The Bible tells us that God comes to open our ears. Literally, that means that if you can't open something that, that does not have a door, that means your oh. ear gate has doors. Yeah. And God has a key that he uses. You know, when you are the owner of the house, you always have what is known as the master key. I mean, I know when you're renting a house, don't think you're the only one with the keys. The owner of the house always has some spare keys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the house you know you know or do something or fix something so god has got some spare keys when we go to sleep the bible says he open he opens our ears mm. opens ears of men and seals what seals instruction so dreams are designed to seal instruction what instruction wow. whatever god is telling you so that either you can get that business get that new house you've been believing God for, get that new spouse you've been believing God for, or be delivered from the witchcraft that the enemy wants to bring against you or whatever the enemy wants to do. Mm. He seals you with instruction, okay? And in the book, me and the apostle are going to be writing, we're going to go deeper than we are telling you right now. And that's why you need to get this book when it comes out. And you're probably going to see it on the Supernatural with C-Draw because that's why I believe you're going to end up with that particular book. And so you want to be able to get that by the Spirit of God. You know, he says, you know, he says, and then, and then he says, the verse 17, in order to turn man, in order to turn man from his deeds. So dreams can actually intercept your actions. You're about to make a major decision that is wrong in your waking. I mean, every, in the daylight, you don't see that the dream, that, that you have been, you have already been hacked. You've been compromised. So God has to put you to sleep to show you what you think is a blessing is about to become a curse to you. So God turns wow. your actions 
walking away from what you're about to do. You said, I love this wow. house. I'm about to buy it. God says, no, you're not buying a house. You're buying problems. When you buy it, you're going to find out the house has got all kind of plumbing issues. Nobody knew has this kind of issue. So you spend the whole time uh, fixing a house <laughs> instead of enjoying <laughs> the house. Wow. But a dream could intercept you from going forward. That's what he's saying. And then he says to conceal pride from man. That wow. means during the day, pride is high. In dreams, yes. God opens the window to check our pride. You see, because what is God saying? In the pride of our waking, you know, we wake up to our degrees, we wake up to our careers, we wake up to our connections, and we think, ah, oh, we got it. That's pride. And God wow. says, all, all of those, all those connections, all of those degrees have nothing compared to what's, what, what, what the devil is going to hit you with if you don't hear the Lord. But you see, because you, you're working, you, you, you start counting. Oh, I got this. I got this. You know, if it doesn't work out, I got some money in the savings account. God says, really? You know what the devil is about to do to you if you don't listen to me. <laughs> so in a dream, God comes to conceive. He comes to, <laughs> he comes to deliver you from pride. <laughs> yeah. He comes to let you know, you know. The, so this is why we are doing this with Apostle. We are so excited about this project. We know that many of you are going to be delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so without any further ado, you know, we're going to get right into it. You know, that we have given you a little bit of a teaching to inspire you, let you know God is always communicating. He loves you. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, Apostle Lee, I found out is that a lot of times when I used to think, where was God when that was happening to me? You know what I found out when I look back? He was screaming, but I couldn't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. What about that dream? I, I, mean, you could hear me I came in the dream and you still did not hear me. Don't tell me I just allowed you to walk into this. You refuse to listen. So, my wow. God, I'm telling you, this thing is important for us to be able to let people get, get people know. You know what? We need to understand the dimension of dreams. And I'll tell you, I always, I've always called you the Joseph in our network. You know, uh, every time I'm around you, Pastor Lee, I, I, I feel like Pharaoh. Uh, I'm like, listen, <laughs> if, it has, if, if, if it has got anything to do with the dream, go see Joseph. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Exactly. So we, we are very excited. So we are going to collaborate very well in our new book. I'll, I'll focus on the theology of dreams and the pastor will focus on the meanings of dreams. And give you different scenarios. So when you read the book, you understand the, the theology of dreams, but also you understand the different symbol symbolisms of dreams. So, yeah. so I sent you. Did, did you get the the uh, what I sent you with the dreams? Yes, sir. Yeah, but before you start to interpret, do you want to say anything about what I just said, and then you can we can wow. get some dreams. Powerful teaching, Dad. Powerful teaching. Yes. In fact, I love that Job because Job summarized everything about how powerful dreams are. And what God is, and how God speaks to his people. And so the way you broke that thing down, Dad, was just tremendous. Because I believe we are entering into a time where dreams have become not just information to men, but they also going to become weapon. They're going to become weapons to us where we're going to be able to use them as a defense against what the enemy is doing. And I believe that you gonna, you don't even have to go wait for interpretation because I believe that the interpretation is just going to come simultaneously with the dream. Come on. Wow. I, I'm excited about it. I really believe that, man of God, we're going to enter that realm where God will give his children because, they will, because we, they're going to need to act very fast and they don't have time to wait for you and me for every two weeks exactly. to, 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 to find out what God is saying. You know, and most importantly, it, it may be something that, that, that needs action within that week. Exactly. So I believe that that dimension of dreams that come with interpretation is coming. But I also believe that our book is going to be very necessary to help people. As a, yes. I, I think our book is going to be the kind of book people put by your bedside. You have a dream, you wake up and you open the dream book and you, and, you, and you begin to look at what does this mean? Because it may mean life and death, what the dream the Lord gave you. Exactly. Exactly. So because of the we, 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 I think we've got about uh, 12 dreams that I sent you. Let's uh, yes. start, if you, can, if you can read them and, inter and we can begin to interpret them. Okay. Let's begin, let's begin with this one by um, Ari. Name is Ari from Alabama. 
Now, I want to begin with this dream because this is very, this is crucial. And I want everyone out there to hear this. This is very, very crucial. Because my dream was triggered by your book. Okay. She was exercising speak to the earth. Now, this is very crucial to all of you out there because I want you to hear this. Because once a teaching or a a prophetic word trigger a dream, the anointed on that man or that woman or that message will remain with you so that you can finish what you were speaking. For example, she started speaking to the earth and she had these three dreams. So the first dream she had, she dreamt she was moving a storage shed on the property. And she said, when, she, when we lifted it with the tractors, four large snakes came out from under the shed and started to move away from us quickly. The snakes was black on the belly, but took us an aqua color, color on the back of the head. They didn't look at me. They just moved away as fast as possible. Okay. So this dream is connected to speak to the earth. Okay. So the first thing I want you to learn, Ari, is this, that the storage, moving storage on your compartment means that this, you, you just went through a major deliverance, speak to the earth. So God's right. storage means that God expanded your capacity to receive. So God expanded her capacity to receive. The second part is he exposed the enemies that was stopping your expansion. So three snakes, okay? One was black on the belly. Black means uh, one that is able to conceal itself. So the enemy that was hiding itself right in your, right in your property or right in you was delivered out of you and away from you. Now the snakes moving away from you means that you were successful. The second thing is the storage compartment means that God expanded you. So there's, there's room. God expanded your, 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 your capacity to receive. He expanded your capacity to, to multiply. So storage means expansion into your life. And the enemies, once God did this expansion, he exposed your enemies. Now the enemies have fled. So you don't have to worry about that anymore where, where the enemy was stopping you from expanding. The second dream she had, she dripped, she was cleaning the barn. And there was many, many snakes in the hay on the floor of the barn. They kept poking their heads up, then diving back into the hay. When they came up, they were biting the cats and then would disappear. I was smashing a garden hole into the hay to try to kill the snake, but didn't get it because it was too fast. This dream right here, the barn represents your wealth or your business. So barn always in a dream means a business or your or the business that you possess. The snakes in there, the snakes in the in the barn means that enemy that is fighting against the wealth of your business. The, the, the enemy trying to disrupt your business, okay? Now, you wasn't able to hit or find them because they moved too fast. So what that means is that the enemy is striking quickly and moving before you can locate them. But here's the perf perfect thing. In dream three, you was cleaning up a child peeing. So that means that God is telling you, you must continue to clean. You must continue to speak speak to your business and speak to the, the part of your business that the enemy is trying to attack your finances. Because in the latter part of your dream, your snakes and rats were there. Rats represent the spirit of poverty. Rats represents the spirit of poverty. So now God has given you a name. So now you need to destroy the spirit of poverty that's been hanging around your bloodline so uprooted, and you will see that when the when the finances come in, it won't leave swiftly where it was before. Wow, this is great. This is very good, Apostle. Yes, yes. So 
the last point I want to say to everybody there, okay, is that whenever, like whenever you put something in practice, because this happened to me when I did jump the line. The first time I did to jump the line, I was transformed into a house where there were small things and I was cleaning it up. So you have to pay attention to the teaching. So what God is showing her that is don't stop speaking. Now you need to speak to, okay, the rats represents poverty. So you need to speak to the poverty, okay? And then the, the snake represents deception or one that is able to hide. So the hidden things that is fighting your finances, fighting your business, Expose that, and you are you are in the enemy reign in that area. Wow, man, that is amazing. That is exciting, man. That is beautiful. I mean, I mean that that is just right on. You can see the 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 entomology of the dream. You can see the symbolism becoming coming together. That is very very powerful. And yes, you are, you are definitely right. You know that we, you know uh, a lot of the snakes technology has to deal with. Uh, you know, or uh, squeezing people's uh, uh, prosperity from coming forth. So this is yes. very, very interesting. You know, um, now what? Uh, now there's, there's there's a second dream, Apostle. Uh, number two is I think uh, it's a very short. Um, what is this? Number two is a very short one. Can you read that one? It's, I believe it's um, Yeah, uh, number two. I think. Yes. Okay. I think this okay. is this from. Um, after Ariel, I think we have uh, number two. Uh, okay. Okay. This one where it was in college. Yes, yes, yes. Is that the one? Yes, okay. I think, yes, she yes. Said, um, by, Levin, by Levin. We don't have to do all of them, but if you can connect them, if they are connected, that's fine. But just uh, go through it, one or two of what she's saying so we can also handle the other, the dreams of other people that are alive and those that are, that's emailed them. So go ahead. Okay, this, this one is, is, is important here. Okay, she dreamed she was in college. Okay, now the first thing I want to teach when it comes to dreams is if you ever dream you are in college or school, it means that the Holy Spirit is taking you through a retraining. College, school, it means that God, is, the Holy Spirit is about to take you through or taking you through a retraining. She was with her identical sister and she moved into a college apartment. That means that means that that means a power of agreement or you're merging. Now it says they shared the room with one or two other people. That means that there are gonna be other people with the same teaching or same type of teaching that the Holy Spirit is about to teach you. The bedroom had two small closets. The room had a large window and it looked like a wooden door. I opened it and looked outside and saw a swamp outside the window and saw a large red couch in the apartment. I noticed a tiny red black snake. Here comes the snake again. The snake leaped at me and bit me under my arm. I pulled it out and it bit my hand. I placed it in a bottle so it would stop biting me. Then the dream ended. Now, she said in real life, she was in college 30 years ago. I had an identical dream, her identical sister, and we attended the same college. This is a very simple dream. This dream dealing with something that the enemy interrupted while the Holy Spirit was trying to teach her many years ago. Mm. Now, it also, there's a very important part of the dream. She said there was a room in a large window and she looked out the the wooden door and open it and outside was a swamp outside the window. That, my friend, is God showing you your generational lineage. The old wooden door represents something ancient, something old, something been around for a long time. Okay, so the wooden window represents, it goes all the way back to a promise. Okay, now I get that from when, when Noah landed the ark he had a wooden window. He opened a wooden window. Window, wooden window means something ancient that God promised that it's trying to get to this family, but that swamp or that false anointing that's in the bloodline need to be clean. Fantastic. So that's what that is. 
and it is connected with Hana's sister. Hana's sister is connected to this. So obviously Hana's sister have a, 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 a divine connection through praying, interceding together. Okay? Yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is very powerful. This is very powerful. Um, you know, can you deal with the with the the small the the one she had on October eight, where she dreams about her parents? Okay. Okay. Oh, she says October eight. You okay, go down. I drip. Okay, got it. She said I drip that my parents was trying to haul my life. My dad was choking me in the dream. My parents had had a gray skin gray gray green skin color then i saw my identical sister intervene to save my life then the dream ended no in real life i do have identical twin sister this dream deals with a uh, anytime choking it represents a pytho spirit a pytho spirit so this deals with a dream or something that god put in them that that is being disrupted by a generational authority that breaks dreams or hopes. So in other words, her dad choking her in the dream represents the authority or the one that's in position that's abusive mm. through word, through word yes. or criticism. You, you see what I'm saying? So the, the, the father is critical. So Choking means to like a python spirit means that they say harsh things, harsh words, or or they speak down, or you're not gonna make it, or you're not gonna come out of it. Now her sister intervened. This is good. Now I want to deal with the colors that the the the, the wear. Say gray and green skin color. Gray is the spirit of warfare. Gray, it's a spirit of warfare. So there's some demonic activity or demonic warfare that's been stealing the children's dreams or aspirations. That is so powerful. That's what I thought so. That is amazing that uh, their parents definitely present somebody with authority that is not managing that authority over their life. Actually, the authority is legalistic. It's choking, you know, and uh, that's very, very interesting. You know, and uh, the deliverance will be found though within the uh, the fellowship of the bre of the brethren. So that is interesting. Yes. So, uh, um, um, one last thing I find that the next one she had an interesting. Then we're gonna move on away from her. But I just feel that this may deal with what's happening right now with Russia and Ukraine. But just thought, uh, uh, the, uh, if you can go to the one that says October three, apostle, then that's gonna be the only thing we deal with her. We're gonna move on to it to the th to to the person after her, October three. Uh, if you can read that. Yes, it said I had a dream that my family was checking into a Russia hotel in Russia. I was waiting in line for check-in desk, and my younger brothers was waiting in line with me. I noticed there was a long line for hotel. Line of people was outside for miles. I sensed that it was autumn, fall season, because of the jackets everyone was wearing. I sensed that everyone was looking for shelter. I sensed that there was some type of global crisis. Thus, many people are checking into Russia Hotel for shelter. I was frantic that I didn't pack and I, what I needed into my bag. And I was also frantically looking for my passport. When I got to the check-in desk, the hotel check-in person asked me if I was Filipino. Then the dream ended. This dream deal with the displacement of Russians, um, immigrants from the war that's currently happening. There are people going to be displaced. There are people going to begin to flee Russia. They're going to begin to flee into and begin to look for shelter. There's going to be a, and it's a, and the time frame is going to be, she's in the dream, she get a time frame. So it's something major is going to happen around the fall. Something is going to take place where it's going to be an absolute disarray. It's going to be something just chaos. And people are going to be homeless. There are going to be a lot of people that's going to be, and the Filipino people are going to be in there because she was asked about Filipino. So that's one of the races that's going to be there. But there's going to be a lot of people that's going to go through a homelessness where the capacity 
to look for a place to stay is going to be just uh, a be very difficult to find because the lines was wrapped all the way around. So there's a major crisis coming around the fall time. That's that's what I wanted. I thought that that was very that was very significant. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's move on to the next person. I believe it's um, Grace from Denmark. It's a short dream number three. Okay, so she dreamt, she dreamt me and my partner, the father of my son, we are in the airport. He was the one in charge to prepare for the journey. When we approached the check-in, he had already given wrong information. And we could not travel. In the dream, I felt so bad and disappointed because I understood it was a very important journey. But the look on his face, he was not disturbed and that added more disappointment in me. This dream is a uh, uh, this dream is a simple dream. Now, what I mean by that is <laughs> the person that she's looking to take care of stuff is is not taking the journey or the assignment as important as she is. So, what God is showing her is she need to make sure whoever she partner with. She need to make sure that everything is lined up because she's going to trust somebody, whoever this is, but they're not going to get all the information properly and it's going to delay where she is scheduled to be. Wow. You know, I just felt that when I saw that dream, son, I just realized that also one of, one of the things God is communicating to this woman in the dream that she's trying to go on a journey of destiny with somebody God has not at, assigned her to. You know, exactly. just because... Just because they made a mistake of having a child out of wedlock doesn't mean that you have to make the next mistake, which is getting married to somebody who has no impetus for their destiny. Exactly. So they'll get stuck in life and be very frustrated, and you won't see the need for the frustration, you know, because the things of the spirit are not a big deal to this person. That's right. That's right. And, and that's the most dangerous thing you could do is take someone on a journey who's not prepared for the journey. Wow, praise God. Well, let's move on to number to the next one. Who's, who's next? <laughs> number, number, okay. Number four is this dream. I had a man I dated in 2019. We stopped seeing each other after six after six months. And in 2021, I had a cut off all ungodly soul ties. Amen. With my ex-husband, past romantic and work partners. And from then on, no, no longer have thoughts, lust, or concern for him. In this dream, he asked his attractive secretary to meet me and send me a request that he wants to have sexual relationship with me. But that's all. No commitment for marriage. I told his loving secretary, no, I'm not interested. I wanted marriage and committed relationship. The secretary then went back to him and told him my answer. I saw his face turn sad. Then I woke up. Not sure if if the, if the race of any important, he is white, his secretary is black, I am Oriental. Also, last year, God put a desire in me to pray for him. Also, I, I also I hardly have any dreams when I slept. Please help me. This dream is really simple, Maya. This dream is showing you, number one, you are delivered. You are delivered from soul tie. Number two, God is showing you, do not reconnect do not reconnect because in the dream it showed you all he wanted was the part that gave you soul time but he don't want to pay for a life journey with you so this is a dream that god is showing you a you have been successful breaking the soul time two do not reconnect and three go forward and don't settle for nothing less than marriage Amen. So that's that dream. Okay. So now, Anna, uh, Masai, start, yes, before we move yes. on, I just threw a dream on the on the on the screen, a short okay. one from the audience. Just do that one and we'll go back to the ones we received by the mail. Okay. I dreamt I picked a nice mango. Nice mango, but 
as I'm walking away with it, it turned into a worm that fell, fell on my foot. And I'm trying to get it off me. Okay. So what this is, is God is showing you that what, what you're about to enter to a season of you be, need to be careful to watch the, the fruit, watch the fruit of the of a thing. You're about to be introduced to something, but God is saying you need to really, really research it before you partake of it because it's going to look like it's fruitful, but it's, it's sent to harm you. A worm in the dream means to slowly rob you of your inheritance. Slowly rob you of inheritance while they're doing it. It multiplies within you. Worms multiply, so worms slowly steal your inheritance. So this dream is a warning that you're about to be introduced to something, and God's saying, pay attention to the fruit, but inspect it before you, be, before you partake of it. Wow, that is uh, that is so powerful. I mean, that that is so. It's a short dream, but man, it's amazing what what can be packed in a dream, man. Eh? Yes, you know, short, but uh, you could see you could see something. Wow, man, God, you know. Um, okay, I'm gonna um, uh, let's go. Let's do one more uh, before we do a, we take a break. Let's do to, to do one more, and um, from the what was emailed to you, man of God. What's the next person? Okay, this one is Anna Mathias from Alaska. Now, Anna, Anna has a very powerful dream. In her dream, she's being chased by a bear and wolf. Me mm. and my three young children. In my dream, I was in a boat, and we ended up in a river that was not fully frozen over. One of my girls named Iris happened to get out of the boat and was walking near thin ice. I noticed it was very dangerous and got out of the boat to get her and bring her to safety. As I walked back to my village, I was approaching there were people watching me and I noticed a dog that didn't like me. The dog was standing by its owner. The, 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 the from far away, what looked like my uh, Malamute Belle, she ran so fast to me and as she got closer, she turned into a lion. The lion walked all around the family with the dog that was growling at me and paralyzed the dog and the people. The lion led me away from the crowd, walked beside me. Then the person who I grew up with hollered to me, and the lion is loyal. He's loyal to you. Look at the lion, and we both walked. This is not the first time a lion has rescued me. This is a very beautiful dream. Okay, Anna, the dream is dealing with a is two spirits chasing your bloodline. Anytime you dream of you and your children, that it means your bloodline, and all three of them was together. Now, the first one that's chasing you is the bear. Bear means witchcraft or sorcery. Of, of one of great darkness, okay? It means that they move in force. And it also means that they rest well to attack you because they have isolated time. Bears have isolated time. So this witchcraft, with, with, it looks like it's, when it goes into hibernation, it means it looks like it's not, not doing anything to you, but it's resting. It's, it's rejuvenating. And every generation, it gets stronger and stronger. The second one is the wolf spirit. These are false leaders. These represent false leaders or false people in authority who look like they're trying to help you, but they're not. Okay? Now, the dream where the daughter gets out the boat and begins to walk on thin ice and you rescued her shows that God is showing you, okay, you have helped them, but on the next age, you must partner with the Lion of Judah to break this generational curse. The Lion of Judah shows up, and, okay, the dog that's barking at you represents an intimidated spirit, 
Okay? It means an intimidating spirit tries to intimidate you. But then the lion shows up. The lion shows up means God is saying to you, it's time for you to partner with Jesus Christ and the blood of Christ to break this generational spirit that's chasing you and your bloodline. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Wow. I mean, that is amazing, amazing. That person will continue. I just want to uh, do a commercial break here so people can see what's going to be happening, uh, what's going to be happening at uh, Three Days of Glory. So, Mr. Director, if you can show the people what the Lord has in store for us for Three Days of Glory, we'll be excited. We'll be, to be excited. We'll be back to inter interpret some more dreams and then pray for people by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. So how can glory and the flood walk together? Grace is the only possibility. So grace, as a way of bridging the gap between the flawless and the flood, has always been the dominant principle of the whole scripture. Don't ever think that this day you're not going to risk something. There is a risking. In order to become creative warriors, you have to risk. She risked her life to go before the king to a place that she got supernatural favor and grace. Satan never fights you on the basis of who you think you are. He fights you on the basis of who God says you are. So every time Satan comes, he comes to challenge you on the regular, if you are the son of God. I'm here to tell you that Jesus through the Holy Ghost is still working miracles in the earth today. If I'm telling you he's still alive and his spirit is still in us and he is still working miracles right now. I'm going to tell you this and I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, God will remove every form of iniquity, every ounce of iniquity that has been around you. The Bible says a decree is like a hammer. Shall I not break the rock? Declare something in the realm of the spirit and watch the hand of the Lord perform. It. He will do it. We have to understand that the greatest weapon we have been given as spirit speaking people, created as a spirit, of God, we have spirit ability to create and to kill out. Everything that Jesus did when he came to this earth and now he's ascended back to the Father and he says, I've given you all authority, I've given you dominion, now begin to act like it. Wow, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, saints, you cannot afford to miss that powerful time of the God encounter. It's going to be supernatural. Amen. Come and join me. Come and introduce yourself to Dr. Miles. Amen. If you live streaming, you get it for 21 days of playbacks. So it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. You know, at this point, I want, I want to be able to give you an opportunity to sow in the kingdom. And we're going to continue. So I'll let Apostle handle that. And then we're going to continue with the, with the dream sessions. So, Apostle, if you can just handle that issue, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to invite all of you that are watching right now. How many know this is a very unique time? But one of the things I've learned over, uh, over the course of my walk with God is how powerful a seed is. A seed can transform your life. This anointing that Apostle Francis Mind walks in. Did you know that whatever anointing you partner with with your seed, you have legal right to speak directly to it and receive the harvest from it. And so there are various ways to give uh, on your screen right now. I, I, I beseech you to partner with this revolutionizing 
in, in energizing, transforming anointing that rests upon the Apostle Francis' mouth and this ministry. It will change the course of your life. I've been walking with this man of God, my wife and I, for over seven years. And our finances have been changed dramatically. And I am telling you right now as a witness that when you sow into this anointing, when you tap into this anointing, you tap into what is, what is the power that is in heaven to transform your wealth and bring you into a place of multiplication. I challenge you tonight to sow your best seed. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. If this anointing is blessing you, and I want you to be a blessing to this anointing and to this ministry in Jesus' name today. There are various ways to give right on your screen. Go and sow your best seed in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. Even as we are talking about dreams, I want you to sow the seed. Uh, uh, give your seed an assignment that as you sow the seed into this ministry, that the dreams in your life that have been challenged by the demonic powers from coming to pass will begin to get to come to pass. You see, yes. the anointing of the message determines what you, the kind of anointing that is available on the trading floors of heaven when we begin to sow into it. So yes. in your comment section of your giving, just make sure, you know, you know, seed, uh, I, you know, just make this your seed uh, for believing the seed that awakens the dreams that have been held Amen. back. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Apostle, um, we will look at uh, maybe one more. I saw something on the on the live one, and then we'll look back at uh, what we have. Let me put this. Okay. Put, yes. I, I hope you can see it. I'm, can, I'm going to read it for you, and then you can yes. go into it. Yes. We bought a house in the woods. There was tall pines. We had chickens, and suddenly I noticed, I noticed a... Uh, uh, I noticed wolf-like dogs underneath the camper sleeping on top of a tire. There was a fence bordering. Then suddenly I noticed where the dogs were moving as it was alive. Then one was chasing one of our chickens. The chicken was a black Austria lop. I grabbed the dog and it would, it would slip out of my hands as if it was very large. If it, st if it stood, it would be as tall as me. I ended up getting the dog out of the area through. Uh, what 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 are you getting out of that? Okay, so this is this dream represents a a blessing or a great space that God is get ready to bring a, this person into. So when He brings them into it, hidden in this place are demonic activity or demonic powers waiting to take or steal what God had blessed her with. Yes. Now, when she grabs the thing and she noticed the size of it, what God is showing her, what he's about to bring her into, she cannot fight alone. She must partner with someone of an anointing that's able to help her clean out what God has moved her into. Chickens in a dream represents reproduction or reproduce, reproduce after its kind. So when the scripture says reproduce after their kind, that's what the chicken means. So whatever God bringing this person into, he's telling them to reproduce after this kind. But there is a demonic power or something that follows this person everywhere they go. So usually this type, type of dream means that they haven't dealt with the thing before they moved. So the thing that they have not dealt with is following them. And waiting to try to steal or disrupt what God is bringing them into. Man, I tell you, when you interpret this dream, it's deliverance. By just the interpreting the dream is deliverance. Yes. You know, because now you can act on it by the spirit of faith. Remember, in the kingdom of God, nothing really matters until you act on it. Okay, now that you've heard the interpretation, you begin to pray uh, what has been revealed and say, Lord, I'm closing these doors. I'm dealing with this issue by the spirit of God. This is, uh, this is amazing. Nothing escapes the world of dreams. It could be hidden mm -hmm. during the day. But the dreams will flash it out. I have another yeah. one from the audience, and we'll go back to the ones that were emailed uh, briefly because, uh, amen, praise God. Okay, here's another one. I'm going to read it to you. Man of God, this is by Laura. Laura, I had a dream, and God showed me a map. On the map were grid lines, grid lines. I couldn't understand what it meant. 
but he gave me a magnifying glass and it wasn't your average magnifying glass. It was long like a ruler and had a big lens in it. He told me to look, he told me to look with it at the map. I did and one of the grid lines or a spot on the grid lines was magnified. What does this mean? Man, I just feel like this is about your message on the blood and the spot and the wrinkle. Yes, <laughs> yes. You, know, you told me light up, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That we need a magnifying glass from God to see the spot and wrinkle on our lives. That's what the dream is about. But you can you can you can, you, you can finalize it, Apostle, but I can already see it myself where it's going. Yeah, that's right. exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. God is showing you the, the spot that is hidden, spot and blemishes in my book, The Blood, the Other Voice, and the Course of Heaven. There's a chapter where I teach about the blood moves us, uh, cleans the spot and blemishes in your life. So what God is showing you is that what, what was hidden is now revealed because the magnifying glass means to see what you have not seen before. So the, that represents the Holy Spirit. And now God is showing you the thing that's stopping you from possessing the land, the property, the assignment that has, God has given you. And that spot that God showed you, the blood is designed to remove it in Jesus' name. Wow, I know I saw that. I mean, that was so powerful. But it just shows you what God can communicate in dreams, man. He can, yes. communicate, he can communicate so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a God we serve. Amen. So now, um, Apostle, let's go back to the ones that were emailed to you. Can you okay. go to the, to the dream number what? Okay, this is dream number six. Number six. Yes. Okay, it says, first time someone wanted to put an IV needle with no medicine into my right thigh, and I refused to allow them to do it. Good. That means that anytime in the dream, saints, when you stop something, it means that you literally physically have done that as well. The Bible said, first that is natural, then that was his spirit. It means that you stopped the enemy from doing something that he was planning on doing. Anytime right. you're in a dream that you stop doing something, it means that you interrupt it or stop what the enemy was planning to do. The second dream, my brother who is deceased wanted to put an IV needle with no medicine into my left thigh. I protested and told him that I was waiting to go shopping with my mother and I did not want to be hindered from moving forward. I allowed him to put it in, but the IV needle didn't look right. I thought it was bleeding, but it wasn't. In both dreams, there was never any medicine administrated, just the IV needle. Can you help me to understand? Yes. These dreams deal with your brother's deceased, but anytime someone's trying to put an IV needle in you with nothing in it, it means the spirit of numbness or the spirit of not knowing. So the same thing that your brother who's dead your brother who's dead, who's gone on, who's graduated, the thing that he fought is trying to chase you. Come on. The thing that he was not delivered from is now pursuing you. And what the enemy is trying to do, you need to be very careful, Kathy, because he's going to use someone familiar, someone that you're comfortable with, to try to get you to accept what he battled with. They're going to try to get you to accept it and that's where you have to be careful in this season because it was your brother that came back to you and your brother is deceased. That's what that dream is. Wow. You know, this is, uh, this is amazing so powerfully. And I took Kathy Moore. She said she has just recently moved to Tennessee. That's where I am. That is very interesting. And she left the number for there. I'm probably going to give her a call at some point. She's coming to Tennessee, my state now. But I, but, but son, what I was also feeling about this dream is there is also, there seems to be an iniquity as well. The enemy is trying to resurrect of drug addiction. Yes. Because yes. They, in, in drugs, literally, they put, a, they put IV in the, into their body, you know, but really it's mm. not medicine. It's, it's poison. That's you right. Know? So, so I really believe that there is, they might be even this thing God wants her to shut down that iniquity in the blood. That's right. You know that can turn into an addiction of any kind. To, uh, exactly, you know, so exactly. That's, that's very interesting. Wow, that's that's amazing. Well, give me the next dream from what was emailed. Oh yeah, this is a good one here. Short, but it's very powerful. And I hope Melissa is watching us. 
This is Melissa Trevino. She said she dreamt she had a physical fight with Satan over her son, and I defeated him. However, it was a battle. My son dreamt he was vomiting clocks. Melissa, you need to know you interrupted the enemy from legally having the right to minister premature death to your son. Mm. You stopped him from having a legal right to take your son out. Blood clots, vomiting clots means that your prayer, your battle with the adversary was successful and you interrupted death from taking your son out. And your son is delivered in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. I felt that. That was so powerful. Short, but man, you can you can pack so you can pack so much. Wow, 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 wow. Yes. Wow, wow. This is uh, okay. I think I'll, I'll get a short one from the audience. Uh, this is uh, 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 Leoni Hendrickson. I dreamed that there was a very tall person in my bedroom. When I opened my eyes, I saw a very tall person taller than the room leaving my bedroom. That was an angel. Yes. That was an angel of the Lord. And uh, and he was letting you know that he's there to protect you or he's there to make sure. Because dad had a teaching. If y'all remember the first time we did this, he talked about when you go to sleep, the enemy tried to invade your dreams. It's the best way where he so tears in your dream. So this is a, a lot of times these angels here are dream protectors or protect you while you're dreaming. They show up. I've seen them multiple times where they came in and they stay over and they watch. They are, they are assigned to protect you while you're dreaming. Wow. That's fantastic. And then another one, it says, this is my duo. Uh, in my dream, I was fought by a man that told me that I have no right to use what belongs to them without their permission. I'm a herbal therapist, entrepreneur, and uses plants in my garden. Yes. So what this is, is a dream of, of the enemy not wanting you to step into what God has given you. Okay. So, so what it is, is it's really a jealous spirit, to be honest with you. It's exactly. a jealous spirit that's rising up against you. It's a jealous spirit that's set to deter you. And it's a jealous spirit that's set to rob you of the finances that God is getting ready to take you into through this. Wow. That is amazing. Son, what is the next dream on the one that was emailed? Okay. Let's look at one more and then we'll look at another before we, yeah, we call it the day. Okay. This one, his name is Beverly Rogers. She dreamt early this Sunday morning that I was in my bed sleeping. I rose to see flies all around me. I immediately grabbed a bottle of insect spray, sprayed them dead, and the rest of them in the room. I went outside in the yard where my sister was. Then she showed me the root of a tree that rotten of in the ground. There was there was alive. I immediately said to her, this wasn't here before, where it come from all of a sudden. And beside it was a channel of water. And in the yard, and it, it channeled the underground that leads to the yard next door to us. And then I just kept saying, this wasn't here before, where it came from. When I woke up from my sleep, it was night. But when I go, go outside, it was day, where the, root of, where the root of it was, and it was day. Okay, this dream is a good dream, uh, Beverly. This is a dream that God revealing you the root of the thing has not been disposed of from your family. Come on. The flies represent the things that uh, flies represent a spirit of aggravation, a spirit of uh, occupying, but not fruitful. So flies come in. It means that they just come in and consume something or take something that has been birthed or been revealed or opened. That what flies do. So in other words, it's a spirit that's sent to rotten, rotten something that is of good nature. So what God is showing you, uh, uh, Beverly, is what God revealing to you is that in order for you to go to the next level, you must pull that root up. God is getting ready to reveal to you the root of the thing. 
When he revealed it to you, you need to get rid of it. Now, notice that in your dream, the root of the tree was rotten in the ground. And, and it was still alive. So what God is showing you is that what your family and you, what you have been doing is you've been dealing with the, 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 the sin, but you now need to deal with the iniquity. Sin is the fruit, but iniquity is the root. So God is showing you in this season, he's getting ready to reveal to you the root of the thing and he's going to show you how to uproot it and destroy it out of your family. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, thank yeah. you. That, that's amazing. So I, I, I want to say something here. Uh, Apostle, I need to bring some order in the house. Because whenever you do these kind of meetings, you always have to do order in the house. Um, um, I want to address the Cecilia Kennedy's concern. We were told ours would be today, actually the 20th, but looks like not seen again, not, not, not the case again. I want to make sure she has something very, very clear to everybody. What me and Apostle are, are doing is, is not an obligation we have towards anybody who's sending those dreams. The purpose of the Dream Interpretation Live is as we pick the dreams, we're not leaving any dream out. We look for that dream. Uh, we must, the, the purpose of this meeting, sense, is to give you an understanding of dreams. We can't get to all the dreams, okay? Yeah. You know, we'll try to get as many as we can, but the book we are writing is going to give you the skills, the skill sets you need to interpret your dreams. But in Amen. the meantime, we wanted to give you symbols so you can get used. So the purpose of Dream Interpretation Live is that's why we do a little bit of teaching and then we go into interpret, interpreting dreams because we want you to understand this amazing world of dreams. And you're going to find out, Apostle Lee can tell you this, as one who interprets dreams a lot, a lot of the dreams are the similar. Okay, yeah. so when you understand certain allegories in the dream, you can interpret yours. That yeah. is really the ultimate objective of what we are trying to get out of this is to teach everybody. So I don't want anybody to get offended because your dream was not taken. That will be the devil. Shut him down because this is a service of love to you guys. We don't have to do it, but we are doing Amen. it to get an ambience, to get a, 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 a paradigm that you guys can work with so that tomorrow you can go back to YouTube and listen to this and say, oh, my God, I dreamt that. That must be this. Oh, my God. That's the, yes. I, I'm, I already have people who are saying from the last one we did and even the last one we did, people began to know how to interpret dreams because there were so many symbolisms that they could relate to because dreams tend to have certain universal templates because humans are in the same spiritual warfare That's right. against the devil. So the That's tactics right. the devil uses across continents it's not very uncommon. <laughs> yes. That's he right. It's used, used before. And yes. so when you understand certain allegories, it will be easy. But with that said, we're going to do our best to get to as many dreams as we can. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't see your, your dream, Cecilia. So probably we'll, we'll look again and see where it's at. You know, but um, the point is, this is a service to everybody and uh, that kind of stuff. So I want to be careful that the enemy does not allow you to get mad for nothing. This is a time for you to rejoice because you're understanding how dreams are interpreted. With that said, Apostle, I want to show, um, or if you don't see your dream uh, that you emailed, put it in the chat because we may catch yeah. it in a live stream. You know, yes. that's what we're doing. So if you've got something that was left out that you think is very important, you know, Apostle, this, this small one, while I look for the other dream, I want you to, to uh, this is Malika. I dreamed that I was on a large ship and I was going up an elevator on the ship. I saw a handsome man on board that was working with me. I also saw a friend in the dream that I knew. Everything yes. is possible to me in that one, but, but what do you say? Yeah, so this dream right here, anytime you're on a ship, it represents an elevation. Anytime you're going up the elevator, it means to, 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 it means to, it means to increase or, or to go higher. This is a dream of uh, basically rest. So God is bringing you to a place of rest so that you can receive. That's what this dream is. This is a dream of rest. God is bringing you to a place. So it's something God is getting ready to bring into That's your right. life. So Jesus. he's about to bring you to a place of rest so it can take place. That's what this dream is. Wow. That is amazing, Doc. Uh, give us the next dream from what was sent in uh, as I look for this other dream. 
Okay, this is dream number 10. And this dream is from Lucre Lucretia. She dreamt the police was looking for me. They were outside my house. I escaped and ran into a field and lay flat because there were shots fired everywhere. I saw an old house and ran inside to hide. A bus came and parked the end from the house. And the bus driver pulled out a gun and started to come in the house. I got up and ran deeper into the house. The house was huge. So I hid deeper in the house. He did not find me. Then I heard someone coming. It was a young lady with two dogs. I freaked out and begged her not to let the dogs bite me. But somehow the dogs appear, uh, uh, dogs appear not to see me. They brushed past me as though I was not there. Now, this is a good dream. Lucretia, this is a very good dream and a common dream. Okay, everybody out there, this is a symbolism like what dad is saying. In your dream, if the police is chasing you, if the police is chasing you in a dream, it means the adversary is pursuing you. If the police is helping you, it means the angels of God is sent to protect you. In this dream, the police was looking for her outside her house. She escaped and ran in the field and lay flat and was shots was fired. Shots in a dream, gunshots means accusations. Accusations. Wow. Accusations with force. Accusations with what? Force. So this is a dream that the adversary is accusing you. There are accusations with force. The gun bullets means with great force. A bus came and parked in front of the house, and the bus driver pulled out a gun and started to come in the house and got up and ran deeper to the house and was and was huge. So I hid deeper in the house and it did not find me. House means a place of prayer. God is saying that because of your prayer life, because of the prayer life or the prayers around you. It is able to hide you. It is able to conceal you. But what God is showing you that there is time now. It's time now to deal with the accuser. It's time to take him to court over something legal that the enemy is using to pursue you. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And Cecilia Kennedy, if you could uh, type in your dream in the real chat, I, will, we, I can't find your dream. Looking everywhere, I can't find it so far. Looking so, praise the Lord, Amen. Praise the Lord. So that is amazing, Apostle. Uh, what 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 the Lord is saying there? That is incredible stuff. Okay. Yes. All right. So, okay. Uh, this is it. Uh, this is. Um, Oh, let me say this to Lucretia real quick. That yes. Lucretia, if you do not have Dad's book on uh, on the courts of heaven, you need to get that book. Because it's going to help you in this season. Because what shakes you, the police the police represents the adversary. So it's something legal he has a right to pursue you because he was looking yes. for you. So you need to get a hold of that book that dad has. And it will show you how to conquer and take him to the court. Okay, Lucretia? Fantastic. So, sir, now we've got another one on, on uh, that I just put on, on board here. We've got 13 minutes to go. Um uh, then so we gotta still do, get to as many as we can on the third less th the last 13 minutes um i dreamed i was at work in a conference room that is uh, suddenly out of the corner of my eye i saw a door a tall dark shadowy figure walked out of the side of the conference room what wow that that's not good that means yeah. that there's some there's some witchcraft sorcery uh at oh. your job yeah something dark entity is has been invited uh in and conference room means decisions so this entity is 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 making decisions through the individual in leadership anytime an entity comes through the conference room conference rooms where decisions are made is where everything plans so this entity is controlling or manipulating decisions through this leader or the person that's over the company. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And then I will look at this one. 
uh, one more. This is Jordine. My husband lives and works in Dubai many times. This strange woman comes to confront me to let him go. I dreamed that they were walking together, but when they saw me, he left her and came to me and stood alone, alone in shame. You know, you, you want me to interpret that here? <laughs> 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 uh, the best way to put it, <laughs> best, best way to put it is uh, there is someone trying to interrupt your marriage. Yes, there's a spirit trying to interrupt your marriage, sweetie. That's what that dream is. Wow, that's amazing. Now, Apostle, I, I want you to say something. Mr. Director, let's remove the comment off the screen. Um, what I was the uh, what I wanted to do is, um, I, in the time we have left, maybe you could uh, talk about and pray using your liberation on the blood for men and women who, for men and women who deal with sexual dreams. What will be your take in terms of protecting them from that kind, those kind of violations? Because I've seen quite a few. That I haven't yeah. on. I've seen quite a few uh, people complaining that they're, they're sexually molested in dreams. What yes. is that? You know, um, I know about, uh, you know, so I mean, if from your understanding of the blood, yes, how can the people God use that as a weapon? And by the way, Mr. Director, if we have, uh, if we have the Apostle's book, we could show it at this time what he's talking about the, this answer to people who are being harassed in sexual dreams. Yes, number one. Uh, it, it's two spirits, Icabus and Succubus. Those two spirits invade the dream and they have sex or sexual encounters with you. The number one way to protect it is you need to take Leviticus 17 and 11. Leviticus 17 and 11. It says, At the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. So what you have to do is when you have that dream, Number one, the, when, the moment you wake up, you need to denounce that spirit, okay? Because there was an entrance somewhere, someone that you slept with, okay? It came through soul tie, okay? So someone you, someone that you slept with, okay, someone that you gave yourself to, that's how that spirit comes in, okay? So Leviticus 17, 11, number one, when you first have it, you need to rise and repent and denounce that spirit, Number two, you need to take Leviticus 17 and 11 and thrust your mm. soul on the altar. What is the altar? The altar Jesus. is the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is the highest altar known to man. That's right. So what you do, take your soul, thrust it on the, on the altar, and then tell the blood, cleanse my soul. Wash my soul from illegal soul ties that gave, that gave interest to Ichabus and Succubus spirit. So it no longer can have legal right to my soul or my sexual inheritance. Okay, number three, after you do that, you need to remarry your soul back to the father. Okay, Jesus. remarry your soul That's back crazy. to the father. Okay, in my new book, I'm talking about being remarried back to the soul. The first place where your soul was tied to was the father. In Genesis, it said that God blew into in, into the into the into the dust, and man became a living soul. So the first place our soul was tied to was the Father. So then, after you do that, you say, "Lord, I give my soul back to you. I I sow my soul back unto you, that your soul and my soul may merge in Jesus' name." And that's how you get rid of that demonic sexual demon is either Ichabus and Succubus. Wow. This is amazing. Apostle, this is a, this, you know, Apostle, this is a, a very detailed how you have done it because this has been a big challenge for a lot of people, man of God, is this yeah. demonic entities, you know? And what I can add to that is as well that if you're having uh, these sexual dreams and they're perversive, sometimes what can happen in the dreams, you could have been married. You know, people are trying to get married in the natural, yeah. the reason they're not getting married in the natural is because in the dream you did get married. That's okay? right. A demonic entity uh, claimed you. Please remember that in the book of um, 
of, of um, uh, Genesis chapter, chapter 6. The Bible, we are taught very clearly that the sons of God, these fallen angels, could have yeah. sexual intercourse with the children of men and marry them. Why do you think they can't do it again? That's you know? right. And so what I tell people to do, because of my understanding of the court of heaven, is one, another thing you can do on top of what Apostle is saying, which is the blood and the cross, which are very, very important technologies. You want to also ask the Lord, stand, be, go before the court of heaven and ask the Lord for a bill of divorcement. Yes. A bill of divorcement, if you have been married away, if you have been married off without your, cons without your consent, mm. you've been married away. And sometimes, you know, what I found that one of the reasons, one of the legal, I said, uh, one of the legal rights, I, I asked the Lord, what, what are some of the legal rights that, that will cause people who love the Lord to end up with spirit marriages that they are fighting? And you know what the Lord told me, man of God? He said to me, last. You know, sometimes where he says, I said, God, what do you mean? Is it, well, when you are fraternizing with last, you know, maybe wow. you, are, you are imagining somebody that used to be your girlfriend in high school or boyfriend, whatever, but you, you are entertaining last, but you are entertaining it at your own pleasure because yes. you, know, you are still not being delivered from the last, you know? Right. So you see what I'm saying? And so what happens is that you think it's just that person you're thinking about, but the devil sees an invitation. Yes. He sees an invitation. And so he comes in your dreams and based upon what you uh, the last you were exercising during the day, the enemy uses that as, as a legal right. And then That's you right. find yourself you're bound to a demonic entity in the realm of the spirit. That's but right. the good news is that the court of heaven has legal right over any spirit entity. Come That's on. why it's called the court of heaven. Come on. So I have had people who got delivered from sexual dreams. The moment we took them in the court of heaven and asked the Lord for a bill of divorcement yes. as they repented. That's why the blood is important because the blood will cleanse them from what they defilement, whatever opened the door. And then they asked for a bill of divorcement from that a demonic entity. In, and bam, it, that's when the, the what I call that spirit wife, spirit wife, spirit husband, spirit yes. connection was broken. So between what Apostle just uh, told you today and what I'm telling you today, all of those, all of those of you that we I didn't get to partake on it because there were so many apostles who dealt with the yeah. same phenomenon of sexual dreams. And I know this can be very, very frustrating, you know. Yeah. And uh, 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 but you know, but I believe that uh, what apostle has declared on the on the blood and the cross, and now the blood is, is can wash away any spot or wrinkle, and the, and the cross being the highest altar in the earth, you know, and then also you're asking the bill of divorcement from the court of heaven. Between all of those technologies, when you put them together, yes. you are going to find freedom from these sexual dreams. Amen. Amen. You know, wow. one thing you can know about sexual dreams is that, you know, is if they are if they are about somebody who's not your husband or, or your or, who's not your husband, or your wife, that what, what makes them very easy to interpret is that it's very easy to know by scripture. That if it's somebody sleeping with you in a dream that's not your husband during the day or your wife during the day, it means the whole thing is demonic. So that those that's ones right. are, that means it's demonic. They are the ones that is they're demonic. You can now focus on okay, why, what legal right did these sexual demons have towards me? Why do they right. to send me? So that's why the blood comes into play, where you go before the Lord and you say, Lord, I forgive me for times I fraternized with lust. You know, yes. because I chose what I want to last after, but the devil didn't, doesn't care. He just used it. He wanted the open door when you sleep. <laughs> then he That's right. the spirit. I was looking right. for the open door. And because you have already invited the spirit of last, that spirit, that those sexual demons get attracted to you like, like, like flies to a light bulb. You okay. Know? Exactly. But the, good, but the good news is by the blood of the lamb. You know, at this point, I want, I mean, it's a director. Let's put again one more time Apostle's book on the blood. And Apostle, speak about your book why people should get it before we close. And, be, and I'm, I'm going to ask you to pray for the people of God as we yes. end. Amen. Yes. This book will take you into a very intimate relationship through fellowship with the Father and with the Son. Because the blood of Christ is a kingdom force that destroys the dark kingdom that we have been birthed into. So this book right here will introduce you and reintroduce you to the blood teaching and will open your eyes to a revelation of the blood and shows you the power and authority that's inside the blood. I beseech you in this hour, this is a book that you need in your library because it does so much. The blood, like I said earlier, 
is, is one of the most unused weapons in the kingdom mm. of God that men need in this hour. Wow. One of the most what? Unused what? Unused. Yes. Oh, Jesus. One of the most unused, 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 unused weapons, you know, and in an unused kingdom. weapon, a, a apostle cannot protect you from the enemy. That's right. You can have a shotgun, and if they and you have got the second amendment, second second amendment behind you if you live in America. But if the thief come and you don't pull that gun, hello, you won't do come you on. Yes. Yeah. So this is apostle. This is a been amazing. Can you believe it's now seven thirty in the morning in the Philippines? Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you, you know what I believe, man of God. I believe God created the world in a circular fashion. So when one is going to sleep, others are waking up. You know what yes. I believe I that for? So that there's always praying, so there's always a house of prayer for all nations in the spirit world. Because somewhere around the world is praying when somebody's snoring. Somewhere yes, there. come so on. That, so God surrounds the earth with, with a prayer prayer <laughs> circle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right in America, it's evening, is that right? Yes. Yes. Well, it's it's 6 30 in the evening. At 7 30 in the morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And um, so Apostle. You know, uh, again, I want to just look at, uh, I'm going to see if Cecilia put something there. Um, Mr. Director, if you see a dream from Cecilia in the live chat, put it on the board if they still, if it's there. But in the meantime, Apostle, I would love for you to, um, where is this? this? This might be Cecilia. It's a dream. Yeah, there she is. Okay, I don't know if this is the beginning or the all, the all of it, but can you just read that apostle and tell me? She said, I keep dreaming that I am back in the house and it's overrun. Like the jungle with animals in and out. But when I go to the backyard under my dad's room, there is a huge underground bunker with loads and loads of treasure and meat for us, and I'm the only one that knows why it is. Apostle, what does what? that mean? Wow, that dream, wow, Cecilia, this is a good dream. What God is showing you is that anytime you see a dream that's dealing with your where you grew up or your father's house or something like that, what God is showing you is that the enemy has been successful where it's ran up or where it's all grown up. The mm. enemy has been successful in hiding riches and treasures, anointings, mantles that your family has not walked in. The bunker means that your family or family members fail to walk in or receive or step into businesses, anointings, moments, breakthroughs. They have failed to step into them, so they are hidden in a bunker or put in the ground. Remember the parable where Jesus came up on them and he said he gave one, one, two, one, three, one, five, and the uh, one of them hid it in the ground. So that's what's been going on in your bloodline. But God is saying that he has given you the key to uncover what has been hidden in your bloodline. And now God is telling you, Cecile, go get it now. Now is the time to receive the treasure that I had for your whole bloodline. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. This is great stuff, Apostle. You know, she has another one that she emailed me. I'm going to read it. It's going to be the last one we do, and then we end it. We end it. Uh, this is Cecilia. So I finally got a dream. She emailed it to me. Says my grandparents used to own two thirds of Albany in the San San, in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, as Rancho El Solito, and when they sold it, it became Rancho San Pablo. The house they bought after in Richmond had a structure in the back patio for barbecue and the playroom for my dad and the workshop. I kept dreaming that I'm back in the house and okay. And it's overrun like a jungle with the animals in and out. Okay, that's when. Okay, that's what. That's okay. That's the dream you just interpreted. Yeah, I just that's the uh, yeah. Yes, and then he, um, yes, and then there's something here. She says, uh, while in the car with my dad, the radio was playing a song he wanted me to hear as a, as as I am a singer. It was part of a musical, and it's 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 it had a girl as a lead who looked like me. And I love the music because it was Broadway style with good Christian message. It was called Madison or Madeline. I don't know if that means anything to you, Apostle, as we get ready to close now. What is it called? 
Madison or Madeline? I don't know what that means. Madison. Madison. So, Cecilia, look up the name Madison, and you will see what God is telling you to do. That's part of the key or the ability for you to unlock what has been stolen from your bloodline and stolen from your family tree. Wow, fantastic. That is, uh, that is amazing. Well, we finally got Cecilia in. I'm sure she's happy now. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We do our best to accommodate people that uh, go with the program. But guys, the core, uh, the basis of this, of this thing is to help you understand uh, how to interpret dreams so that because of this dream interpretation live that, that we'll be doing every two weeks, we don't know for how long, but um, we, we, we will do it while God gives us grace to do it. Amen. You know, we're working on our book and uh, we can't wait soon. We'll be showing you the book cover of our brand new book that will be coming out. It's going to be amazing. But wow, Apostle, I mean, the comments have been amazing today, Apostle Lee. The comments have been amazing. Amen. Whoa. Now, Praise also, God. I know sometimes you do you do some prayer gatherings on Facebook. Uh, could you want to give any any details? Anybody want to join you on one of your prayer gatherings on Facebook or, or yes, or um, yeah, yeah. Just simply look me up. I'm I'm just Lee Roberson on Facebook. I'm getting ready to to do a new schedule. So the one that I have is old, so I don't want to give that one out. So just simply go to Lee Roberson L E E. R O B E R S O N on Facebook, and uh, you can you can send me a message, and I can give you the reschedule. Because I'm gonna have to reschedule with my old schedule because it's conflicting with some stuff that I got coming up. So that way I can I put the time times out. But you can visit me at sonsofgodembassy.com. That's sonsofgodembassy.com, and you can find out everything that I'm going because uh, or what I'm doing is right there at sonsofgodembassy.com. Fantastic. The, the, the website to find a pastor is right on the screen. If you're a pastor and you are watching this and you're like, oh, my God, I would love to have this apostle in my church to, to teach on dreams and interpret dreams of the people in the church, you could make a festival out of it by bringing Apostle Lee Robertson, my son, to your church. He's, he can preach. Listen, he can preach, but he can preach better than TD Jakes, you know. Uh, because as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm biased that way. But also, guess what? This guy, I mean, he can preach like TD Jakes in terms of preaching, but but he goes why Jakes doesn't go right now in miracles, signs and wonders where the sick get healed, devils are cast out. It's amazing. So if you're a pastor and you say you are, will follow Dr. Francis Miles and you're looking for the guest speaker, I highly commend him. You will not be disappointed. Praise God. So you, you can still go to sonsofgodembassy.com to book him and uh, enjoy the ministry of the man of God. Wow, what a day we've had, man of God. Whoa, this is amazing. Can you imagine how the book is going to be? <laughs> oh, it's going to be amazing, Dad. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Well, praise God. So uh, a sense, as you can see below, there's a scrolling uh, lower thirds for how you can give into this ministry. If yes. Trudy Francis Mars International is blessing you from all over the world and you want to show your appreciation, you will not want to, you know, there is a grace that you can tap into when you saw into what blesses you. It's how God designed the kingdom of God. Amen. That you, 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 get, you reap a harvest from where you are being fed spiritually. So if you are being fed spiritually by this ministry, amen, we, we are more than honored. Amen. If, if you don't have a church in this COVID world, post-COVID world, uh, think of joining my church, Francis Mouse, churchonline.com. Mm -hmm. Francis Mouse, maybe Mr. Director, we can put that website on. Uh, we can put that uh, website on, on screen. Francis Mouse Church Online .com, and you can become a member of our church. We're going to start having live present worship plus teaching uh, starting uh, in the month of um, starting in the month. Yes, get ready. Amen. Starting uh, by the grace of God in the month of March, we're going to start doing congregational services on Saturdays. Um, I believe it's Saturdays, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe wow. is when we're going to be doing it. Uh, well, we'll do a, uh, we will do a congregational worship service, and then I'll teach from wherever I am in the United States to my congregation or members of FrancisMarchesOnline.com. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, Apostle, let's just stretch our hands towards the screen as we pray for God's people. Yes. So, uh, Father, right now we pray for healing wave. Yes. We pray that any demonically engineered diseases, the people that are fighting because, yes. of, because of demonically engineered dreams, that left them sick, that programmed them with sickness, Today, yes. by the anointing of God, me and the pastor, we come in agreement 
and we break that spirit of infirmity yes. Yes. over the lives of your children, son, uh, sons and daughters. We declare healing is yes. released over them. We declare oh, healing miracles are released over them in the mighty yes. and the glorious name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. Be healed. Receive your deliverance. We deactivate every demonic program operating in your bloodline, in your life, and yes. then become a demonic dream. We yes. deactivate every, every time bomb. We deactivate every weapon of mass destruction. Yes. We deactivate every weapon uh, uh, programmed into your body, into your life by a dream from the satanic world. We say yes. we shut down those demonic templates in your life that came because of dreams. In Jesus' name, we silence, we silence, and we arrest every serpent and spirit. Every serpent and spirit that has been showing up in your dream, Lord, we call the Father God. The next time a snake shows up in your dream, I ask the angel of the Lord to chase it down with fire. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus. to God be the glory. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Friends, we love you. Apostle and I say we love you. We so appreciate you. Our next uh, Dream Interpretation Live, is going to be in two weeks from now. We are going to do it. You know, by the way, if you're not subscribed to my to my email list, you need to be subscribed so you don't miss these uh, emails that go out today. We send an email to my entire database that contains the contain the announcement about today's meeting. So we'll be doing it every time. So we remind you a day before and the yes. day of, you know, but sign up at Francis Mouse that come and become part of my email list. And then you won't miss this type of meetings. But our next Amen. one is going to be our next one is going to be on the 13th uh or the 14th of march so yes. we look at me and apostle look at our schedule whatever works of those two days 13th or the 14th of march we'll do our third episode we're calling them episode because this is one show yes Three, interpretation live yes Amen. Amen. We love you. shalom shalom god bless bless So how can glory and the flood work together? Grace is the only possibility. So grace as a way of bridging the gap between the flawless and the flawed has always been the dominant principle of the whole scripture. Don't ever think that this day you're not going to risk something. There is a risking. In order to become creative warriors, you have to risk. She risked her life to go before the king to a place that she got supernatural favor and grace. Satan never fights you on the basis of who you think you are. He fights you on the basis of who God says you are. So every time Satan comes, he comes to challenge you on the revelation, if you are the son of God. I'm here to tell you that Jesus through the Holy Ghost is still working miracles in the earth today. If I'm telling you he's still alive and his spirit is still in us and he is still working miracles right now. I'm going to tell you this and I'll prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, God will remove every form of iniquity, every ounce of iniquity that has been around you. The Bible says a decree is like a hammer. Shall I not break the rock? Declare something in the realm of the spirit and watch the hand of the Lord perform it. He will do it. We have to understand that the greatest weapon we have been given as spirit speaking people, created as a spirit, of God, we have spirit ability to create and to kill out. Everything that Jesus did when he came to this earth and now he's ascended back to the Father and he says, I've given you all authority, I've given you dominion, now begin to act like it.